Hi, Sue and, and everybody. Um, Sue's wanting to turn some of this image here, this um, I call Doodle Dog, uh, into a stitchable image. She just wants the dog with the eyes and the nose. The purple will be the fabric that she's stitching onto, and she's going to do the text in a hyperfont. Um, I've opened this image up into my um, Paint Shop Pro program just because I wanted to show um, show you something here. Um, when we look at that, we're seeing, most of us are seeing like three colours, the white, the purple, and this sort of a salmon orange. But if I ask my program to tell me how many colours, uh, or to count the colours that actually make up this image, you're probably going to be really surprised to find out that there are actually 13,548 unique colours that have gone into making up this image. And to show you that a bit more, I'm zooming right into the pixel level. And as you can see, almost every single pixel is a slightly different shade of, of colour. And even where you think is white, if you if you look, even the white is made up, um, or a lot of the white is made up of, of, of different uh, shades there. So I just wanted you to be aware of that because this is where sometimes you have problems with your with the singer. What you see as three colours, it's trying to translate thousands of, of colours. So this is why it's so important that the image you start off with is the best that you can do. And if it was me, I would actually use this program of a paint shop to edit this back down to just maybe half a dozen um, colours. Um, but you don't have that option, so we're going to have to do it all in the in the Singer program. So, how's that? Um, so here we are in in Singer. I'm going to go to a new um, new hoop, and we know we want the small hoop, or I think you're wanting the small hoop for that. So here we go. And the first thing we're going to do is go into the draw package, open an existing image, and I called it that. Um, doodle doodle dog and so there we have it on the screen and if I zoom in if you look carefully you can actually see where it looks all smudgy in the colors and that is uh, this program's way of, of showing um, oh th those sort of 13,000 or so colors so First thing we need to do is reduce these colours down, and we have um, two options up here. We've got image processing and we've got colour reduction. If we go into the colour reduction, um, first of all, let's see what it suggests. And it's just seeing the purple and the white. It's not even seeing this orange. But for this, that's fine. Let's say OK and just see what that does and you can see it's not very good um, so I'm going to undo that go back to our original image and I'm going to come into the image processing up here on the menu and that opens up this screen and in the screen you've got two boxes at the top the first box shows you what the original image looks like now the box on the right here shows you what it will look like once you've made the changes so I will do more videos on all these different options that, that, that we have here but for this we're going to come into a different type of color reduction we can go direct or indirect and I'm I say I'm not going to explain it now all I'm going to say is I'm going to be using the indirect method and I'm going to reduce this down to 20 which is the minimum that I can the size of the smallest object in pixels, I'm going to increase that up to um, to 12. And if you watch this image on this post-processing, I'm going to start reducing that down. And as I reduce it down, you'll see more detail coming into the image. And I'm going to leave it at that at 6. So in image processing, color reduction, I've got an indirect at 20, 
smallest object 12, post processing on 6. And you'll see that I don't have any of the text there or the circle. That's all that's all gone. So I'm going to say OK. And now we have the dog on the screen that looks a little bit um, um, more like the image that you're wanting to, to print out. Um, first thing I'm going to do is going to go white and white and just enlarge this canvas a little bit so I can see and have a little bit more room um, around to play with. I'll crop it back down after. Um, I did already try this once and I found out that the eyes, um, one eye showed up, the other didn't. It was just a little bit too small. So the first thing I'm going to do here is come up to my dropper on my menu and I'm going to come into the purple with my right and my left mouse and so I've chosen the same purple that we have here. I'm going to come to my pen in the smallest size. I'm going to just come in a little bit larger here. And I'm just going to make this eye... Um, actually, I'm going to go white on my right mouse. So I just want to make these eyes just a little bit, a little bit larger. That way I know the Singer program will, will pick up on it. And so you can take your time and um, make a better job of it. But there we go. That's, um, I know they're large enough now that the program will see it. The next thing I want to do is put that circle back that we lost. So I'm going to come to red with my right and mouse. I'm coming into my ellipse. And that's the circle here, ellipse, and I want the ellipse which is hollow in the middle and just an outside border and the thickness of this, I'm going to go for this one here, number like the third one down. Now if my mouse will oblige me I want to drag a circle from the top um, left down to the bottom right so let's just see how this will work. While I'm dragging it, I'm going to hold my control key down um, to make it a perfect circle. So let's see what happens here. Um, I can see that that's going to be about right. So there we have that. And now I can oops, undo. Now what I'm trying to do is crop this back down. Allow me. Now, sort of behaving. Yeah, that's better. Now, um, we want. What do we want? Um, I'm going to come to um, the blue here with my right and left mouse. I'm going to come to my fill can here, and I'm going to fill the dog. Um, that's the area there. Fill fill the dog in in um, um, blue, and I'm going to come to the green. This is going to look really weird. Still on the fill, and I'm going to fill the eyes and the nose. So let's see how we how we get on with with that. So I'm now going to close that save changes and I'm going to call it um, doodle dog um, z save and there it's opened it or the it's opened the image on the screen now we have to run it through auto punch so create auto punch there we have the dog that's fine it's cropped well enough for what we need now I'm going to go to inches and see what size. In the moment, the whole thing is under two inches, one, one, like one and a half. So I'm going to actually make it two inches. That'll make the dog about an inch and a half. But so you can make this any size that you want. So if I'm going to go next, and let's see what colours it suggests. Um, it's got the white. It's got the green. It's got the red. It's got the purple, and it's got the 
two blues there, but I think they're they're, they're close enough. Let's just see what happens as we run it through. Um, let's go next. I'm going to drag the towel down the split between column and fill, and then go next. So we've got the dog's head. Yes, we want to stitch that. We've got the circle. Yes, we want to stitch that. This purple here, we don't want that because that's um, going to be fabric. So I'm going to remove that. And these are the eyes and, and, and the nose. So that's all we're left with, but that's fine. So let's go next. Now, the holding my control key down, clicking the head, the eye, the eye, and the nose. These I want <coughs> you need to be filled. Um, I want them density. I'm going to put on three as my start point. I want it to have some fill underlay. And then the circle, I want that to be column. I want that to be satin stitch, I think. And again, make that three and give that an underlay. And that's all we need to do there. So next, use a jump stitch and finish. And let's see what that looks like on the screen when we view realistic view. And if I zoom in to 200%, this is now where you can start playing around. You can change the fill patterns and things. But hopefully that's what you're after, Sue. Then you can add your text where you want to. This circle here does need a little bit of work. If I zoom into 500, you can see that's a little bit thick there. So I can come into my outline edit, select the circle, <coughs> excuse me, and just pull that line in or that point in there a little bit and say stitch it. Um, this is where the editing comes in, where you need to play around with it just to tidy it up. And hopefully that's what you want. I say if you didn't want to use this circle, you can always go into your design browser and pick one of the frames that you have on your system already. Um, a lot of these are, are freely available. These are the ones that came with my Singer package. There's one there which is filled. You just need to delete the fill and use the circle. But so if you didn't want this circle, um, you do have other options. But anyway, so I hope that helps, and I'll see you back in the group if you've got any questions. Bye.